Up until now, we've learned quite a bit about agents and especially Langchain features that help us in building agents. And we've learned all this in the LLM and Gen AI projects playlist on this channel. So in today's video, let's apply all that we've learned by building an agent that acts as a medical assistant. There are four steps that we will follow. We will load our medical data set, then we will store our data set in VectorDB, then we will create our agent and finally use it as a conversational agent because we want to talk to it and ask it medical related information. We'll go through a Google Colab file and I want you to make a copy of it in your own drive so that you can access it later as well. The link for this file is in the description of this video. We start off by installing all the required libraries, Langchain because that's what will help us create our agent, Langchain OpenAI because we want our agent to be powered by an OpenAI model. From Langchain Hub, we will get our template for the conversational agent later on. We need data sets to be able to load and work with our medical data set. And finally, ChromaDB, which is my vector DB of choice apart from Pinecone. From data sets, we import load data set, which helps us load our mentioned data set. And using pandas, we print the first 10 rows of our data just to see if it was loaded correctly. And you notice that the data is well structured and in the form of questions and answers. And because we're on Colab and this is just a POC, I'll restrict the size of data to 100 rows only. In our data set, the second column has the answers and we need to get it into a format that's more suitable for further processing. And document loaders is going to help us with that. So we initialize our data frame loader where the data field has our data set and then we specify our column which is the answer column and next we load the documents from the data frame loader and then we display just the first two documents just to verify if the documents have been loaded correctly. The document is large and we don't want the model to take a lot of time when replying to us. So there are multiple ways to process the data for faster retrieval. The first one is to use a text splitter where character text splitter is a class for splitting text documents into smaller chunks based on characters. And using this, we create multiple chunks of size 1250 characters each and an overlap of about 100 characters. That just means that there will be an overlap of 100 characters between consecutive chunks. And this splitter of ours is now available to use in the text splitter variable, which is what we use next to actually split into chunks our data set, which is in the document format inside the F document. And then we access and print the first chunked document and in the output, everything looks fine. Now we are at our third step where we will be initializing the embedding model we will use to store the data in our vector DB, where the selection of our embedding model is important because that's what is going to enable faster search. So we start by getting and setting the OpenAI API key with get pass. We import OpenAI embeddings because we have decided to use text embedding ADA2002 as our embedding model and it's blazing fast. And then we use OpenAI embeddings and pass our model name and OpenAI API key. Since we want to work with a vector DB, which in our case is Chroma DB, we will first initialize a folder in our Google Drive where we will store our data. And in the very next line, you see us passing our data set document. The embed object we just created, which has the name of our model and our Google Drive folder. And now we are ready. Now we're going to do a quick test if we're able to retrieve information quickly from our database. So in the next cell, we start by importing OpenAI, chat OpenAI, conversational buffer memory, which will help us with storing previous interactions with our LLM. And retrieval QA from Langchain chains and this is going to help us retrieve information in a question and answer format. So we initialize our LLM as OpenAI and pass the OpenAI API key. Then we set our conversational memory equal to conversational buffer window memory. Now, in case you don't know how memory in Langchain works and how it helps agents, you have to check out my video on Langchain memory, which is part of the same playlist. And then we finally have our retrieval QA chain where we pass our LLM that we created and the retriever will be equal to our ChromaDB dot as retriever. Since we want to retrieve information from our ChromaDB that already has our data set as embeddings. In the next cell, we just run our QA chain with the question, what is the main symptom of LCM? And as you see in the output, we get the correct answer retrieved from our VectorDB. Now, please note that QA is a chain, not an agent. And if you don't know how chains work in Langchain, I recommend watching my Langchain chain video for more clarity. And that's also part of the same playlist. Now we finally create our agent and with agents, the best part is you can use tools and we've already covered Langchain tools in this playlist as well. So our plan is to create a custom tool that helps the agent retrieve medical information from our created database. So we initialize our tool with the name medical KB, which is medical knowledge base. And the function it's going to run is the QA.run function we created earlier. And then we have our description of the tool. The description is important because that's what helps OpenAI understand which tool to use in which situation. Next, we get a prompt template from Langchain Hub and we pull React Chat from there and pass it to our agent as prompt, along with our LLM and our tool, both of which we have previously defined in our code above. Next, we use an agent executor, 
which is a cool feature on which one of my previous videos was based. And in this, we pass all of the things we have created until now, our agent, our tools, our conversational memory, and some other parameters that help guide the agent's activity. And with the agent executor, it'll get really simple for us to invoke the agent directly and also select the right tool. So we first send the input, give me the area of square of two by two. And the output, you'll see that our agent first selects the medical KB tool, and this tool doesn't help it to get the right answer. So, it, so OpenAI processes the problem on its own and gives us four square units as the answer. Then we again ask it a non-relevant question, which is, what is the identity of Clark Kent? And this time, it directly takes the decision of not using a tool and answering the question directly. And we then clear the agent's memory and ask it a relevant question finally. So we ask, I have a patient that can have botulism. Now, how can I confirm the diagnosis? So I'm asking this question as if I were a doctor and this was my medical assistant and I get the right answer retrieved from our database. And the best part here is that the agent did use our medical KB tool to find the answer and did not answer it directly on its own. And now, since our agent has memory, we don't have to pass context again, and we can directly ask, is this an important illness? And the agent knows what we're talking about and gives us the answer without using the tool, so the memory works perfectly. Now, this was an awesome project where we used agents, agent executors, conversation memory, tools, and most importantly, custom data sets and vector database. And this means we have applied all of the things we have learned up until now, and the best part is we learned all these concepts while building stuff. We never did any boring theory. All right, I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. Don't forget to join our Discord channel where we all hang out. The link is in my YouTube bio. A quick word for our sponsor, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video. Now, this channel has very niche technical content that doesn't get picked up by the YouTube algorithm. So it's completely dependent on you liking the videos, commenting on them, subscribing to this channel, and most importantly, sharing these videos with your friends. Thank you so much for all that you've done for this channel, and I'll see you in the next video.